across the middle. St. Brown had lots of space. St. Brown still going down the sidelines. Tight roping all the way to the end zone. Adams runs up the middle. He's gone. Touchdown again, Josh Adams. Off of the hands of Phillips and into Drew Tranquils. Winbush got a block. Got the corner. Touchdown, Notre Dame. And the pass is intercepted. Love go. Touch pass to Claypool. Touchdown. He's got pressure in his face, and Cody takes him down. Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football with Brian Kelly. I'm Jack Nolan, coming to you this week from the 7 on 9 Club on the ninth floor of Corbett Family Hall, honoring Notre Dame's seven Heisman Trophy winners. The Irish took the field on Saturday, hoping to turn a good season into a very good season with a road victory over then 20th ranked Stanford. The Irish defense got off to a terrific start, shutting down the Stanford rushing attack and forcing a punt on the Cardinals' first three possessions. And when Brandon Wimbush hooked up with Kevin Stefferson for an 83-yard touchdown, the Irish had a 7-0 first quarter lead on the longest Notre Dame passing touchdown since 2010 and the longest against Stanford since at least 1996. Stanford quarterback K.J. Costello responded by passing the Cardinal to a couple of touchdowns, but the Irish offense answered with a 15-play drive that resulted in a field goal to cut the lead to 14-10 at the half, and Notre Dame opened the second half with a short Wimbush pass over the middle to Equinemius St. Brown, and St. Brown carried the ball 72 yards into the end zone for a 75-yard touchdown and a 17-14 Irish lead. Later in the quarter, Chris Fink's 41-yard punt return set up another Justin Yoon field goal that gave Notre Dame a 2017 lead. But you cannot win big games if you turn the ball over, and that is what Notre Dame did three times in the fourth quarter. After Stanford retook the lead early in the fourth quarter, Brandon Wimbush threw the first of two interceptions in the quarter, and Stanford converted the turnover into a touchdown for an 11-point lead. A C.J. Sanders fumble on the ensuing kickoff set up another Cardinal score, and Stanford went on to win 38-20 despite being outgained by the Irish 415 yards to 328. In the locker room after the game, Coach Kelly pulled no punches with his team as to why they lost the game, but he also did not lose sight of the many good things the 2017 Fighting Irish football team accomplished during the regular season. It's very simple why we came out on the short end. We turned the football over twice late in the game in the fourth quarter in a very tight football game, and we didn't make enough plays. We got to coach better, we got to play better in these kinds of situations. So there's no magic bullet here. This group as a whole transformed the entire psyche, the entire football program in in the, the way you went about your business this year. But we're not there yet. And that was evident today that we've got work to do. But you guys have done an incredible job to move us into a position where we can in fact take the next step. And you should be hungry to want to get to that next step. But there's more to do, there's more work, and it's going to be harder because the bar is now higher. And you should be excited about the opportunity to be part of that. So we got one more game left. And and we need to get to 10 wins. That's the mark. We need to finish with a win. Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Notre Dame Athletics, Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM. Costello pump fakes, steps up, and now he's sacked. Stepped up right into the big arms of Jerry Tillery, the fine nose guard with his fourth sack of the season. 
didn't necessarily get off to a quick start on offense, but you did on defense. Three punts forced in the first three possessions. The last one, Okora with the hurry, Tillery with the big sack. Yeah, I mean, I think our kids were prepared. Uh, I thought our coaches did a great job of putting them in a really good position um, to be successful today. Um, you know, we knew it was going to be a four-quarter fight, and uh, it really got to the fourth quarter with, uh, you know, that kind of football game. And, you know, obviously we, we know what the, the, the final story is here, is that uh, we made mistakes in the fourth quarter. But uh, there's no question our kids had the will, the desire, the preparation was good. Uh, but when you're on the road against quality opposition, uh, turning the football over and not making the plays when you need to is, is going to be the difference in these kinds of games. You made some big plays in the game. The first one was your first score. Brandon Wimbush had a lot of time to throw on a lot of occasions. I think on the touchdown pass to Stefferson, he had, well, he threw it at five seconds of protection, and yeah. Stefferson caught it 83 yards for the score. Yeah, I mean, I thought he did some good things. You know, he stayed in the pocket, you know, showed good pocket awareness and presence, um, hanging in there, waiting for the receiver to come all the way across the, uh, the field, and, and then, uh, you know, led him, you know, on that so he could catch it in stride and, and then turn it up field for, uh, for a big explosive play in the pass game. I mean, you know, we've been lacking a lot of those plays most of the year. So, um, you know, well executed play, uh, but again, it was only going to be, um, you know, one of the many plays that I thought we were going to need as, as, as the game unfolded. What has Stefferson brought to the table? Because he seems to be getting better each week. He can do a lot of different things for you. He can go downfield and catch the intermediate routes. He's really good in the screen game. You can hand it off to him. So I'd say in a word, it's versatility. Uh, that's what he brings to the table. You wanted to stop the Stanford running game, and for the most part, you did, but KJ Costello had a really good day throwing against you. He led two scoring drives after your first touchdown. Yeah, you know, really, we've, we're in position to make plays. We're gonna make, we gotta make some plays. Um, you know, I think that, uh, you know, a couple of pass interference calls that could have gone either way. You know, there's a lot of jostling for the football. They're physical. Uh, our guys, you know, were physical as well. Uh, a couple of calls didn't go our way, but, you know, we got to make some plays too. You know, when the ball's in the air, we got to come down with it. Uh, a couple of times we had great pressure. The ball was up in the air for a long time, and we didn't have guys that could go up and make it. So uh, give credit to Stanford in those situations. After the second Stanford touchdown, you did answer with a 15 play drive, but you didn't get into the end zone. I had to settle for a field. Well, those are the plays you got to convert, right? So, you know, we, we started to run the ball. I thought we were controlling the line of scrimmage. Our tempo was good, uh, but we stalled. Uh, and we had been turning those long drives into touchdowns. Um, just missed a couple of receivers that were open again. Uh, we needed to be a little bit more accurate with the football, and we just were a little bit off in terms of our accuracy on, on that late, late drive going into the, uh, the second quarter. Around the West Coast, you started the second half, a little West Coast offense, a pass over the middle of the EQ for three yards, and he took it the next 72 for a 75 yard touchdown. Yeah, showed great explosiveness, uh, turning it up down the sideline, got some great blocks. Stefferson throws a great block. Um, I think. Uh, Tony Jones throws a nice block down the field. So great blocks down the field, and he shows great speed down the sideline. Real big play, gives us a great lift, you know, in the third quarter on the road. And, you know, now you're feeling like, all right, we've got some great momentum. And later, you get a great punt by Newsom, down by Crawford at the one. Yeah, and, and I think that was a key play in the game is that we come up with a great stop, we get a great punt return, but two silly penalties, one where we get a procedure penalty, one we flinch, uh, and we back up and we stall a drive into only three points. That's a situation right there, a key time in the game where we've got to turn that into a touchdown. I thought that was a, a, a big part of the game where we need to turn that into seven points. And then the first of two interceptions occurred since the time you got here. We've harped about turnovers, you can't do it, and that was a crucial one. Yeah, and it was a, you know, and Brandon knows better. You know, they, they dropped the buck into the boundary. They had two weak defenders. He's trying to fit it into the boundary. He knows better. Um, key turnover in the game, and then we come right back and uh, we, we give it back to him on a kickoff return. So very disappointing that we turn the football over. They know how, they, they can't turn the football over to a good football team on the road, and we paid the consequences of uh, those two turnovers. Really good season, really good turnaround. I'm not going to call it great because I don't think you'd accept that. This would have made it probably great tonight, but you've made tremendous progress with nine wins. What are you doing in the next month now? Because I know now you start to take the next step. What do you need to do this month? The next step is to win 10 games. Um, that's really it. So, you know, I told our guys, uh, you know, they get a couple of days off and we're going to get back in the weight room. We're going to run in condition and um, they're, they're um, 
their commitment has got to be over these next couple of weeks while we're on the road recruiting uh, is, is I want to see what their drive and commitment is to 10 wins. And uh, if you don't have the drive and commitment to 10, don't show up. I only want guys that want to win 10 games. Uh, it's important for us to get to double digits. Uh, that would be two out of the last three years. So it's important for us, whatever our bowl destination is, we'll see how that plays out. It's out of our hands right now. The kids did a really good job. Um, they've laid a really good foundation. We've got some holes um, that we have to work on. Uh, we got to coach better. We got to play better in these kinds of situations. I think we've learned a lot. Um, indebted to our seniors. Uh, they have moved us back to where we need to be and now we can build on where our weaknesses are. We've got to shore up those weaknesses and um, um, the bar will be even higher next year. Through the first 12 games, what areas have you been most pleased with? I think just, you know, I think the mental preparation is so much better. They come in the games with a mindset. They played physical today. I mean, they got after Stanford and um, they don't turn the football over. This thing goes down in the fourth quarter, probably with the last um, team with the ball last probably makes makes the uh, you know this the game uh, in terms of who wins the game I guess is what I'm trying to say so I, I just like the way we played you know we played physical we played with a great mindset um, that's probably the thing that I'm most proud of. Are there areas where now you're just winching back going you know what I thought we'd be better than that in November in, in, in certain areas. Uh, no, we were exposed in the areas where we, we need to get better. Um, you know, our passing game's got to get better. Uh, we got to play the ball better in the back end of our defense. And we got to coach them better. You know, we got to coach better in the passing game. This is not just about players, this is coaches too. So coaches have to improve, players have to improve. We got to get better as a, the entire program. After Saturday's game, Coach Kelly thanked his seniors for all they did to get the program back on the winning track this season. One of those seniors is linebacker and captain Greer Martini, who will put the finishing touches on the best season of his career in the bowl game. Martini is fourth on the team in tackles this season with 70, has three tackles for loss, two forced fumbles, and his first career interception. But more importantly, he is living out a dream that became a focus for Greer way back during his elementary school days when he asked his grandparents for a Notre Dame hoodie for Christmas. Kind of being one of 11, you have to be part of a team. And if you do one individual thing, you might make a good play, but ultimately you have to be part of a team and be, be something bigger than yourself. Greer Martini caused the fumble. Balls down the field with Greer Martini. So I started playing football from a very young age, probably around like five or six, just kind of throwing the football around in the backyard with my brothers uh, and my dad. Uh, and then I kind of went on to like Pop Warner flag football and played it throughout high school. And obviously I'm here now in Notre Dame. Gargiulo is stopped. First man there was Greer Martini, a career high tackle day. I stepped on campus. I kind of just fell in love with it. I remember like going to the grotto with my dad and just sitting down there and like sharing that moment with him. And I just knew it was a special place. From my early age, uh, my parents instilled in me that the most important thing is school. Yeah, I want to be so much more than just a football player. Um, I want to be a student athlete. I want to be a good friend. I want to be a good son. So I think that's really what embodies what a Notre Dame man is. Plenty of time. Intercepted by Greer Martini. During the actual play, like not much goes through your head. Uh, I think that more so like the ball was there. I picked it off and I was just like, holy cow, I got the ball in my hands. What do I do now? Martini looking like a running back in the Red Hawk territory. I wouldn't say I blacked out, but it just like there wasn't much going through my mind at that point. To the outside and tripped up. Good tackle by Captain Greer Martini. Being a captain here, probably the greatest honor I've ever been able to receive. Um, wearing that C on my chest means more than anything to me. Um, I get to represent this university and all that it stands for. Um, and for me, that just means the world. And I just want to honor that responsibility and go out and lead these guys. Ultimately, I just want to be part of something that's bigger than myself. And we have something special going this year, and we just got to continue to keep it riding it out. Senior defensive end Jay Hayes is one of the reasons the Irish defense, and in particular the defensive line, improved so dramatically this season. Hayes turned in the best regular season of his career with 26 tackles, three and a half tackles for loss, and his first career sack while also recovering a fumble and breaking up two passes, earning him the right to run this week's 60-second drill. <laughs> 
Favorite all-time movie? Uh, Training Day. First car you ever drove? Uh, Honda Accord, 2003. Favorite musical group or artist? Migos. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? Another play the piano. Thoughts on the new video board inside Notre Dame Stadium? Awesome. Player on the team most like you? Sean Crawford. Which is better, a sack, a fumble recovery, or a safety? A sack. One thing you always hear from Coach Elston in practice? Attention to detail. Hardest hitter on the team? Niles Morgan. Best singer on the team? Myron. Best dancer on the team? Micah Dutreway. Best comedian on the team? Me. Best dresser on the team? Wimbush. Worst dresser on the team? BT. Player on the team most likely to become a football coach? Quentin Nelson. Hardest player to tackle on the team? Josh Adams. Best thing about playing for Notre Dame? Tradition. Jay Hayes, you've completed the 60 second drill on Inside Notre Dame Football. Mm. For the first time in Notre Dame history, the Irish recorded two touchdown passes of 75 yards or more in the same game against Stanford. The first one, an 83-yard pass from Brandon Wimbush to Kevin Stefferson that gave the Irish a 7-0 first quarter lead, is this week's Notre Dame Ticket Exchange Vivid Seats Play of the Week. Lead seven on third down. He's got lots of time to survey the field and delivers a strike across the middle. Off and running is Stefferson, fastest receiver on the team. They're not going to catch him. Begins celebrating at the 25. Touchdown, Irish. A lightning strike of 83 yards. It's time now for the experts at Tyrac.com question of the week for Coach Kelly. This week's question comes from Paul in South Bend. Coach, what are your thoughts on the new early signing day for college football? I mean, I'm going to be out straight here for the next three weeks, but, you know, it's going to allow us to get about 18 of the 22, 23 guys that we have openings for signed up in December and then really let us start to focus on 2019. So it's going to get us ahead of the curve um, and really allow us to, to begin the recruiting process and, and stay ahead of the game. The Irish do not know where they are going, but they do know they are going to a bowl game, meaning lots of additional practice time in December. Oftentimes, some of these practices are used to develop some of the younger players for next season. But Coach Kelly left no doubt what the purpose of December's practices will be. No player development. Let's get the win. Uh, we'll develop the talent and the things that we need to do uh, in the offseason, in the spring. Um, we'll have plenty of time for that. We're going to use this to uh, sharpen our edge a little bit, um, make sure that our skill development is better for the guys that are going to play uh, in the bowl game to get that 10th win. That will do it for this week's edition of Inside Notre Dame Football. We'll be back over the holidays with our annual bowl preview and season wrap-up special. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and as always, go Irish! Inside Notre Dame Football is presented by TireRack.com and brought to you by Team Notre Dame Partners, Coca-Cola, Under Armour, and Gatorade. Inside Notre Dame Football is also brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of Notre Dame Athletics, Vivid Seats, Canon, Xfinity, Delta Airlines, proud to be the official airline of Notre Dame Athletics, Nissan, Notre Dame Federal Credit Union, and Sirius XM.